Hi everyone, welcome to the video. We are Tuck Thunder. I'd just like to say a big thank you for sticking around on the channel if you're subscribed. It's been a while since we've done any videos, but we're back. Uh, and, and this is War Thunder Tips For You By You. So we're looking at some of the comments uh, that you've left us on our videos, taking them, projecting them out to everyone so everyone can learn your knowledge, uh, as well as adding some of our own along the way. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this, uh, this video helps you improve your War Thunder experience. Well, first up, before we get into the kind of tips to improve your gameplay, here's a tip to save money if you're thinking of buying an expensive vehicle. You know, I know some of these top tier vehicles cost 2 million silver lines, it's ridiculous, but there's a really easy way, and it's just when to buy the vehicle. Wait for the May and November sales. These happen every year in War Thunder, across all of the nations, all of the vehicles, all of the modifications. Uh, I, it just makes sense. You can save 30%. Uh, in the May sales, uh, as shown here. Uh, so this applies to all vehicles um, in selected nations. And it's worth noting that the sales rotate between nations across the space of about a week. I think it's two days for, you know, three nations. At the moment, it's USA, um, Russia, and Britain. And then over the next three days, uh, it's going to rotate to whether it's Japan, China, Italy, whatever. The point is, is in May and November, whatever nation, whatever type of vehicle, whatever BR, you're going to get a sale. In May, it's 30%. In November, it's 50%. Wait for them. Easy money. One of the ways you can make sure you get more silver lines from playing War Thunder, as Facebook Gaming says, is to use a talisman. You can earn this from a chest after a game, or you can buy one with golden eagles. This will add 100% research points every time you use that vehicle. And while we're on the topic of the talisman and vehicle research, it's also worth noting how to research vehicles and the most efficient way. Uh, and the best way to do that, quite simply, is to play at the BR of the vehicle you're researching. What I mean by this is if I open a British tech tree, uh, and let's say for example I want to research the Archer. The Archer is BR 2.7. If I was to play with my Vickers 7.7 .7 BR in the British tech tree, it would be extremely inefficient, and while it would gather research for the Archer, it would take a lot longer compared to just playing with 2.7 vehicles uh, or similar. Even up to the 3.7, I believe it's a difference of a 1 BR point. So I can play with the Cromwell and it would be much more efficient to research the Archer. Another way, as Star Wars Masters points out, is to unequip modifications. This is especially true of planes, either extra cannons, bombs or rockets will reduce the repair cost that that vehicle will have to have if it is destroyed. And Jonathan Palmer says, reducing the amount of shells you take into a battle will reduce the repair cost. This is true to a less great extent, but if you're trying to make as many silver lines as possible, it's worth doing. And it's also worth noting on that point that taking less ammo, especially if it's uh, high explosive or something of that caliber, will uh, reduce the chances of your ammo rack being blown up, making your tank more survivable. Another tip when it comes to saving money, as uh, Flip and Burn has mentioned in the comments, is uh, about the preset and using free crew repair in an active preset. Now what this means is if I go onto the Churchill 7 and I bring up the card, at the bottom here it says free repair time with crew. Now that means that if I left the game, if I left the preset, sorry, open when I close the game, it would repair for free across the two day period. Now, while I'm not saying wait two days between playing, if you're going to switch off for the evening and you have damaged vehicles, instead of spending your silver lines and repairing them, just leave the active preset open with damaged vehicles, turn off your game, and next time you come onto the game, it will have repaired either the whole thing or at least a percentage, saving you silver lines. Easy way to do it, and there's absolutely nothing you need to do apart from leave that preset open when you close the game. Uh, another thing while we're on the topic is uh, crew points. Uh, now, crew points you earn by playing vehicles uh, in battles, whether that's uh, arcade, realistic, whatever. And you can distribute these crew points to improve the crew of your vehicle. This makes your tank more survivable, gives it better driving, gives it more accurate uh, range finding, faster reload speeds. 
the, the list goes on. Uh, we have actually mentioned this in a video before, and I'm linking that above now. But the basics are, you get these crew points, and you can distribute them. Uh, the, the important ones, really, are vitality on everyone. Um, maybe agility, uh, targeting for the gunner, and uh, especially weapon reloading. Uh, I haven't done it here, kind of a bad example, but... If this is done to to a large extent, it really can improve the uh, the reloading of your tank, making you better player, better vehicle, getting you more kills, earning you more money, and more importantly, more fun, which is uh, sometimes hard to come by. And uh, while we're talking about crew points and how to distribute them, uh, the reason I mentioned the agility was because. Uh, you know when you take someone's gunner out, especially if you're playing realistic uh, and somehow they seem to replace that gunner or replace that driver really quickly? Well, this is how they do it. What they've done is they've upgraded agility. Now, agility is the ability of the crew members of the tank to switch around positions. So if one were to die, they can really quickly put the other one in that position. If that's gunner or driver, that's extremely important. So uh, definitely spend your crew points on agility, improves your gameplay and uh, well hopefully your survivability as well. Now on our recent video of best ways to make silver lines, we've got a lot of stick for saying don't play ships and uh, you're all right, we don't play ships. Uh, it may have been a bit of a misinformed comment but uh, some of you left some comments and I want to share them with you now. So uh, Andreas K said uh, you know we should definitely play ships and dreadnoughts. So if we take his example of dreadnoughts and we go on to for example the British fleet obviously uh, we come down to some great ships and he's saying that you can make up to 50k per battle and if you start putting on boosters whether it's a hundred percent ten percent you just get a lot of silver lines uh, however it does take time and he acknowledges that it can be a little bit painful to play as such it's not quite the most action-packed uh, way play War Thunder, but however, if you want to make money, it's a great way to do it. Uh, the judge here says playing ships is generally bad for making money, but he thinks that at 4.7 for USA, you can make quite a bit of money per game. At 4.7 for Japan, Slea thinks that you will make money even just playing chill. And Lord Kiltridge, who is a veteran of War Thunder, um, agrees that disabling auto repair is a great way to save money. Playing low tier bombers, he thinks, is also another way to make money. So he says you bomb a base, you go back to the base, you get more bombs, and then you just bomb another base. If you get shot down, he says don't repair this plane, you'll just fly a different one. And then when you're buying vehicles, wait till there are sales, and you don't even have to crew them. So, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, we hope that some of these tips will help you save money, uh, improve your play style, give you just some new ideas, something new to try in the game. Uh, and if there's anything else, please let us know in the comments below. We love to hear from you, and uh, thanks for your support, and thanks for letting us reach 1,000 subscribers. Great milestone, and uh, hopefully we can continue to grow the channel from here. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, see you next time.